So I passed the CISSP. This was an extremely difficult exam, uh, took a long time, and uh, the most fulfilling out of all the exams I've taken, certifications, and I wanted to talk about it. Uh, my process, tools I used, and, uh, and the exam day, and what it was like. I used five tools in preparation for the CISSP. The first, like I always talk about, is the video resource, and I used A Cloud Guru again for this exam. I talked about them pretty heavily in my previous previous video, an AWS Solutions Architect Associate exam. If you don't haven't seen that video, go ahead and check the link down below. Uh, they're a great video resource. Uh, so I looked at the library. I love the training again there, like the platform. So I use them for my main, just um, a brief overview discussion regarding the topics and, and getting familiar what the certification uh, has relating to each domain. Um, it kind of gives me a good landscape to start off with. My second resources were the practice exams. And I was pretty unsure on how to approach this selection just because there are a lot of resources. I think it relates to option in comparison to other certifications. If you look for CCNA practice exams, they're all over the place. For the CISSP, I wasn't sure which platform to truly trust uh, on this level of certification. The CISSP is just extremely difficult. There's 175 questions. So um, thankfully that Boson does have a uh, pool of questions to go through. Um, though my typical resource was measure up. They do not have a resource. The CISSP um, exam questions or practice questions, they're not there. Boson was great and instrumental relating to me passing this exam. They have such a big pool of questions that were extremely, extremely difficult for me to pass. And then in addition to supplement some of the knowledge that I was afraid that was missing in Boson, just because I was unsure whether or not I could just trust one platform and just go and take the test. This is an extremely uh, pricey exam. Uh, didn't want to uh, kind of just gamble on it. I, I was putting a lot of energy into preparation for it. So I purchased uh, official uh, ISC squared practice uh, set exams. It's like a booklet. I'll share it here. Uh, and also a link down below on the one the version that I used and it's just a pool of just questions that you can go through and they give you I believe two official uh, pra full practice exams with each domain so each chapter they talk about they have lists of questions and then reviews of those questions so okay my third resource is a study guide that kind of deep knowledge and and do, do take a while to read through, but I have pivoted since the AWS and well, actually the Linux plus when I read the whole book, but uh, the AWS, I didn't read the whole study guide. Neither did I do it with a CISSP. I use the study guys uh, specifically to dive deeper into topics that the videos don't cover. Uh, and the, essentially I use the practice test results. The domain sections, I'll take a pool of questions of five or 10 if I get less than 70%, I highlight those questions that I got wrong. Look at the topics, not the questions, not figure out how to answer those questions, but look at the topic that that question is targeting, whether it's a Kuberos or if it's like physical security relating to uh, fire hazards and stuff like that. I'll use a study guide to uh, gather more info relating to the topic. And then it leads to my uh, fourth tool, which is Quizlet. So I use the practice exams, get the, say if I get a question relating to fire hazards, because that was a pretty difficult area for me to remember, uh, and, and the score, what type of uh, suppressions for gas or fire and stuff like that. Uh, so I went ahead and used a study guide to talk about, uh, review the topic, get that topic in more detail, make notes on it, and then I would uh, take the practice text again, and then if I did it ace those questions or still not have a full understanding. Like I remember I talked about it, just can't tip of my tongue, can't remember exactly. I create a uh, flashcard of that topic. Not the answer, don't, I, I highly discourage the copying the question, give the answer because you're gonna do terrible in the exam. 
you want to know uh, and create flashcards relating to the topic at hand. If you don't know with what, what suppresses or like what's, um, I think it was uh, Halon, right? Halon, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing it wrong, but Halon is like a gas that so suppresses fire and it's bad for the environment, right? But if you don't know what that is and they ask relating to gas suppressions, you're not going to, um, you, you'll know what the other ones are, but you're unsure what that one is. You won't have a lot of confidence in the exam. So I will create a flashcard relating to describing what that topic is. And so that way, when any time that pops up in questions, you're pretty confident relating to the answer you did choose. And it kind of clears things up with the exam itself, like the overall result of the exam. So after I completed every video in ACOG Guru, with the exception of the networking uh, videos and slides, I completed uh, all of the practice exams questions. I did an average of about 72% completed uh, passing score uh, on Boson and uh, ISC squared pool of exams to kind of uh, make sure that I'm well-rounded. It's not just memorizing questions in Boson. Uh, and then I used my study guide who created all notes relating to uh, the topics that were really, or domains, I guess I should say, that were really struggling for me. Uh, went through all those notes, created notes for each chapter, created tons and tons of flashcards within Quizlet, custom made to myself, which is, I think, the reason why a lot of these topics did stick so well for me because I didn't use other people's flashcards. I created my own uh, using the system I just discussed. And then finally, with the fifth, which was recommended to me uh, by uh, an individual here in the local community, which is the 11th hour. I used the 11th hour, and I'll reference uh, the, like, the exact version. I think it was the third edition that I purchased um, here down below in the description. And I used the 11th hour in a very uh, unique way where I, all the other chapters, I read through all of them, quickly did the questions, made flashcards as I progressed, and I did that for one whole week. The second week, which is the week prior to the, I, I took the test on a Tuesday. So the week prior to that, I uh, spent the whole week starting with practice tests. So boson practice tests to be specific. Each day for one week, I took two uh, boson exams. So I started with Monday, 50 pool of questions. And then in the morning, then, and then while I'm working, I'm doing flashcards. So I'm working flashcards the end of the day. I take the last uh, 50, so I took another 50 questions. So, and then they went increments Monday, 50, Tuesday, 75, or was 65, um, and then Wednesday, 75, Thursday, 100, and then Friday, uh, two full exams, uh, real uh, uh, timed exams. So, and, and in between those two, which is a morning and an evening test, I did the flashcards that I used and created, not used, but created the week prior with the 11th hour. So quickly skimmed through 11th hour, made flashcards in the first week, or I guess two weeks prior to the exam. The week prior to the exam, I used those flashcards in between the quizzes that I was taking or the practice tests I was taking. The practice test is extremely important because while you are studying for this exam you have to also be prepared for the longevity of the exam you have to be prepared to take a hundred and plus questions right um if you're not prepared for that standema then you will not be able to pass this exam if you know everything in the domains great but if you can only take 50 questions or 60 questions and then you're tired or burnt out you will not be able to pass this exam. You need to score and have your attention for, uh, I think the exam is uh, four and a half hours. So four and a half hour exam, and then a hundred plus questions. That needs to be able, that you should be able to do that coming into the exam. Just like when you're running. If you can run a mile at seven minutes, but you actually, the day of the, the race, you have to do 10 miles, but you never ran 10 miles before, you're not gonna do well. So the week prior, I was pretty much preparing for that 10 mile run, four and a half hour exam. So by the end of Friday, I was really comfortable to get to 100 without missing a beat. That last 75 were pretty difficult, 
but not as difficult as for, uh, I guess, 16 weeks prior when I couldn't get through 50 of these difficult questions. So I built up that stamina. Saturday and Sunday, prior to the exam, I flashcards. Went to the gym, flashcards. I tried to, I, I, I was still, I'm taking my master's program right now. So I did homework for that. But I just casually went through uh, the quizzes or the flashcards, sorry, for Quizlet. And then that Monday, I didn't study at all. Uh, I watched uh, Nacho Libre, what, my favorite uh, comedy for sure, movie. I do want to talk about the 16 weeks preparation uh, relating to the length. People out there, I've seen videos talk about they've done it for six months or they've seen videos where they those people who passed it talk about people who study for six months or a year. For me, it took me four months, 16 weeks. Uh, the reason for that, I think, is because I've been in the industry for about a decade. I'm currently, uh, and I have experience in security, early stages of security before it was, I think, cool, um, where you, you touched, I was in networking, I got into firewalls. Networking security has always uh, been a part of my career. Uh, and so uh, relating to the, the security operations and the security architecture, like, antivirus and point protection. I was always a technician touching that technology. Um, and coupled with that, which I think is uh, extremely important, is my master's program at University of Arizona. I'm taking the information security track um, for cybersecurity, and it's a master's program, and it touches uh, auditing, pen testing, uh, everything it, under the sun relating to um, cybersecurity, offensive, defensive side, uh, and some of the topics, or I would say about 50, 60% of the topics at hand I had already done in that program relating to like quizzes, classes, lectures, uh, and it allowed me to have bridge the gap a little bit. It was some of it was a review when I was doing a cloud guru. Other stuff was not. Um, I struggled a little bit with the software side um, and just because I don't have a software development background. Um, and I think it was. Domain seven, I don't remember the, the names of those domains exactly. I don't want to get them wrong, but it was domain three and domain seven, uh, which I think was one of them was for sure encryption. So encryption was an issue for me. Uh, memorizing all those like uh, the links and uh, and what is uh, the weaknesses of each were really difficult for me to memorize them all. And then um, domain seven, which is uh, I believe it has to do with the um, the fire suppression and all that um, safety and things like that. I'm I'm not really come from a operations background, I come from more of a technical background. So uh, those areas took a little bit longer for me. So I really hope that this video uh, helps you in your path to the CISSP. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. If anyone's interested in my flashcards, uh, I'll go ahead and share them with you as well. Just comment down below if you like it. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe this video. If you want to hear more relating to uh, these topics, uh, mention what you want to want me to talk about or, or review, um, and, and I could maybe build out a video uh, speaking to that if enough people request it. Thank you again. Peace.